Dearly beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, welcome and we appreciate our loving Father, the ever-loving God who takes good care of us. And so let us pray, offering ourselves to his precious hands. Father God in heaven, thank you for opportunity that you give us. Thank you that we interact with your word. Thank you that we are the ones that we are reading it this season and so that we shall gain more from it. Bless us and bless our time together in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, we thank the Almighty God for ever loving us, for ever taking good care of us. The loving God who knows us in and out and we are created in his own image. And so we continue focusing on his goodness, focusing on his love, focusing on his care. And one of the things actually that I've taken interest in is like we have always shared, the people that the word of God, the Bible talks about, the people that are on the Bible pages from page one up to the very last page. And so these people's names appear in the Bible. And what do they mean to us? There are characters, there are personalities that we think about, that we read about, what they did, what they said, how they acted, good or bad, they leave a message for us. And so we have been in this season talking about the personality, the man called Joel. Joel, the prophet, one of the prophets in the Bible. Of course, actually one of the smaller prophets. And I did mention to you that finding the prophetic books, the book of Joel is one of the shortest, has three chapters, but there is a lot that actually we keep learning from him. The things that he spoke, the things that actually he prophesied, the messages that he delivered to the people, they remain a milestone just like other prophets have done. And so I did begin with the name Joel and Joel means Yahweh is God. Just that Yahweh is God. The Lord is God. And we did something about that. Now, we dived into the message that is in the book of Prophet Joel. And I just desire that we digest even more. Think about it even more. And because Joel means Yahweh is God, it is my heart's desire that actually we think a little bit more about the name. That Yahweh name, God, and the descriptions that the Bible people have given to God, and these are his names. You will realize that actually the Bible is full of God's names. They are his attributes. And depending on the circumstances that God used to appear to the people. And so every circumstance, every situation gives God a name. And so I thought that actually we discover a little bit more with you. There are so many names that God is known for, hundreds of names. When you open these Bible pages, so many of them. But since the name Joel means the Lord is God, what does that mean to us? What does it mean to you? And so the name describes the character and the attributes of God. The name of God describes his character describes his attributes. And so it's not just a name, God. It's not just the name, the Lord. It's not just the name, Yahweh. It's because of the things that God keeps doing, the things that God kept doing. And when he says it, he does it. Can I repeat that? When he says it, he does it. When he intends it, he does it. And because when he intends, he does it. He says he does it. That is his name. And so, not just a name, not just, but it offers insights into God's nature and his relationship with human beings. Now, God's name is not just a name there, but it has a meaning. It has a relationship that's why I take close interest in talking more about him because what he says, what he thinks, what he intends, he fulfills, he does it. And so it is all for the good 
of the beings, the human beings, the creation that he has put in place. So realize, friends, that actually God is goodness, God is mercies, God is name, God is attributes, are not in itself for him. But everything that he does, everything that he says, everything that he intends, everything that it is actually for the good of his creation. And since human beings are the apex of creation, since man and woman are the top of creation, the apex, the tip of creation, the topmost, now our God cares a lot more about us. The reason why his names, his names, his attributes, his character refer to him, but it is for our good. The reason why we need to take a little bit more time, know him by name, know him by name, and we shall discover a little bit more about that. Now, God is the name, and that is how he refers to himself as Elohim, Elohim. He is your creator. And when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, what the Bible says is in the beginning, God. Praise the Lord. In the beginning, God. And this Genesis chapter 1 tells us that God is, in the other, in the other language, he is Elohim. He is a creator God. Elohim. He is a creator God. He has the power to create. He has the power to make. He has the power to bring into being. The reason why we read Genesis chapter 1, I've already said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Praise the Lord. So what he says, he intends it, and he does it. And so he's a creative God. The reason why he's called Elohim. He makes and so, who are we? Who am I? The one who is speaking. Who are you? The one listening and watching. He is God, the creator. And so, in our creeds, in our creeds, those statements of faith, we will say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So the God that we believe in, you and I, is the creator God. And so when he mentions Joel, Joel, the Lord is God. He is Elohim, the creator God. And so in Psalm 139, we read about ourselves that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Who made you? Who created you? So this is something that actually we need to bring to the forefront. That as you get out of your house, that as you enter your house, he is the creator God. He's a maker. He is our maker. In Psalm 100, we sing, bring joyful songs to the Lord. He is our maker. So he's Elohim. And so this is just about one of the numerous names that actually God has. He exhibits. He is a greater I am, actually, just like we read in Exodus chapter 3, when God mentions his name to Moses. Go tell them. So he makes things happen. He brings about into existence that which is not. And so I'm very, very confident and very, very sure that the God we believe in, the God we trust in, is a creator God. He makes the impossible possible. And so he is a great I am. He's the Lord today. He's the Lord Yahweh. Now, another name that you wish, would wish to think about is Elohim Haim. Now, this Haim is the living God. He is the living God. Now in Joshua chapter 3 verse 10, of course actually, when Joshua was telling the Israelites, he said, today, he tells them, today you will know that the living God is among you. Now he is not anything. He is the living God. And so as you believe in one of his attributes here, God is living. God is alive. And he acts, he speaks, he works. And so the reason why we, you and I, who believe in him, know that I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He's a working God. He's a living God. He is an acting God. And so that one is something that actually we never joke about. So when you talk about him, when you stand to speak, that's the God. So the reason why Joshua was telling these people that today, today, 310, that today, 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 you will know that actually you are serving the living God. 
You see that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you all the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gagashites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. The living God is among you. Friends, I smile at his desire that I speak about the living God. Living, he works. The reason why when you have the life, when your eyes can still blink, when your hands can still move, when you can smile because you are living, we take this attribute from our Father, who is a living God. Now, why should we talk about this name? Like we said, Joy the Lord is God, and his name is Elohim Haim, the living God, and Joshua telling the people that you'll know that the living God is among you. And so may we experience the living God among us. May you experience the living God among you, you and I. So actually, we derive life from him. He's living, we are living. He works, we work. He talks, we talk. And we derive our will of being. We derive our existence from the Lord God. And of course, another name that you will wish to hear from me also is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the name that actually was exhibited during Abraham's time. Some of these names are Okay, most of them are situational, depending on the situation that was prevailing, and that was his name. Whatever he did, when he was doing something, that was his name. So Jehovah Jireh, when you read Genesis chapter 22, verses, read on the story. But the story is common, that actually God tested Abraham, telling him, take your son, Isaac, the only one that you have. Sacrifice him. The son asks a few questions, but... Abraham answers him and say, let's go. God himself will provide. That's his name. It, it, gets, it becomes his name. Now, as they go, they reach the hill, they reach up there, they have the knife, they have the firewood, they have the, you know, they put up the, you know, the old hand. Now, least the, the boy, you know, that actually he was to be the sacrifice. Now, here God exhibits his provision. And from nowhere, but from him, the ram was provided. So God provides. And what does it mean, therefore? The Lord will provide. And this one means you and I know that God is Jehovah Jireh, he's the provider. Meaning that God is a sustainer. He gives to sustain us. He gives to make us live. And in Matthew chapter 6, in the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he talks about those last verses, 28, 27, 28, going down up to the last verse. What are not about? Because he gives examples of the lilies of the field. He gives examples of the birds of the air. And he says that God who provides for the birds of the air, God who dresses the grass of the field, he will dress you. He will care for you. He will provide for you. He will sustain you. And so fear not. Worry. And he says, do not worry about tomorrow. And so this message comes to speak to me, to speak to you. That actually our God whom we serve is a living God and is a provider God. The reason why we call him Abba, Father. And by the way, that's another name. He's Abba, Father. In Romans chapter 8, we read about him, that his spirit propels our spirit to mention Abba, Father. And you see what the Lord Jesus has taught us in the prayer that he makes. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on us as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Now, give us today our daily bread. You see how connected they are, Abba, Father. Now, Jehovah Jireh, the provider. And in the Lord's prayer, our Lord Jesus was teaching us, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. The provider God provides bread. Pray the Lord. And so this is one of the attributes, one of the names that actually God attains circumstantially, basing on the prevailing circumstances. And he exhibits himself as God. The reason why. As I continue on to mention a few other names as we finish, that actually he is not limited. 
God is not limited by space. God is not limited by time. God is not limited by anything. Circumstances, he remains God. In whatever situation, he will prove that he is God. He, he will come in that form. Are you sick? He will come as a healer God, Jehovah Rapha. Praise the Lord. Are you hungry? He will come as a provider God, Jehovah Jireh. Are you, you see, are you having no peace? Another name is Jehovah Shalom. He will appear as Jehovah Shalom. And Jehovah Shalom is, the Lord is peace. Are you having, you know, so he will appear. He will come in the circumstances, the way the circumstances dictates. So there is peace that only God can give. And so, the Lord, shalom, the Lord, peace. And you know, in John chapter 16, verse 33, the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ, almost actually giving his final Moment 16, uh, 33, and he says that I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world, that in me you may have peace. And so this is one of the things that actually we derive, I mean, we, we know, we jubilate about because he's Jehovah. He is Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Our peace. You desire that peace in your life. You desire that peace in your heart. You desire that peace in your circumstances. You desire that peace at work. You desire that peace wherever you are. The reason why we make proclamations may the peace of the Lord, which surpasses all understanding, Jehovah Shalom. And he comes, he exhibits, he reveals himself basing on the circumstance that there is. And so, could be, let me give you one or two more, that Jehovah is, you know, he is Eli Elion. Eli Elion is, he's most high. Pray the Lord, most high. God is sovereign. The reason why we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty. He's high. He's incomparable. He's incomprehensible. You, we cannot. He's high and above. Now, in as much as he's high and above, he's transcendent, most high. Transcendent is the terminology. But as Christians, we also know that since he appears in our circumstances, he translates himself from transcendent, most high, to immanent. Immanent meaning just near us. From immanent, see the name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, meaning that actually he is near us. Near us is God. With us is God. So, in as much as he's high above, he's transcendent, he's high, he translates himself. He's never limited by space, he's never limited by time, but he reveals himself depending on the circumstance that prevails. And one other thing that actually that we need to remember about Jehovah, God, the name. Remember we're talking about the name Joel, Joel saying the Lord is God. Now, these are his names, these are his attributes. El Roy, El Roy, and El Roy meaning that he who sees me, he who sees me, and I am always excited when I talk about he who sees me. Whatever circumstance that you are in, he who sees me. Happiness, he sees me. You know, joy, he sees me. Sadness, he sees me. Am I hungry? He sees me. Am I devastated? He sees me. Now, this is derived from the sort of Hagar. Abraham's slave girl and Sarah, who ran away, and while she was actually out there in the field, not in the field, in the desert, life was devastating so hard. God saw Hagar's misery with her son Ishmael, saw her tribulation, and he came in that situation 
to help her. God sees, God meets, God cares our, about our anxieties, about our misery, about our fears. Now, can you pronounce Elroy? He sees me in whichever situation that you find yourself. Hagar knew this, the secret. And I have said time and again that actually God revealed himself. And in every situation that he revealed himself, that was his name. Now in this case, in this case Elroy, he sees me. Hagar gives the name. He who sees me. Elroy. El means God and Roy. You know, the other one sees me. So he helped her. And so we pray that actually as we read this Elroy, um, this who sees me arising from the helping hand, and um, this is the point that we are making, that may God help you. I pray today that may God help me. I pray that actually God, may God help us in our situation that we are in, Elroy. Now, relatedly, another one is Jehovah Rohi. Now, Jehovah Rohi, God is the shepherd, you know. And this is where David shows himself in Psalm 23. That actually, Psalm 23 is a comforting name. Comforting name. He watches over us. He guides us. He protects us. He feeds us. He carries us. The reason why in the verse 4 he says that even when I walk through the fire in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, God carries us through. He's a good shepherd. Pray the Lord. He is a good shepherd. And Psalm 23 is a name that is the shepherd. Now, because of the time, we cannot finish everything. But I don't wish to miss this one, that Jehovah Nisi is the point. Jehovah Nisi is another one. Having talked about Jehovah Rohi, the shepherd, and of course, the shepherd don't forget talking about Jesus mentioning that I'm the shepherd. I'm the shepherd. And who takes good care of the sheep? Now, this one, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, the Lord is my banner. And this one comes as victory. Sets it up. Sets himself up. And so, these names, friends, I may not finish, but I just open up that you dive a little bit more. And what I want, to, not want to forget, I keep mentioning it, that actually God revealed himself. He revealed himself depending on the circumstances, the circumstances that demand his hand. And so he will come. Are you struggling? He will come to help you out and that help that he offers you is his name. That is why he is. And the reason why we say he's not limited by space, he's not limited by time. Human beings we are. I want to help, I can't. Someone needs money, I don't have it. Someone needs help, I don't have the strength to do it. God comes to our situations. God comes to our circumstances, depending on the situation that we are in. Which one are you in? Are you desperate? Are you struggling? Are you happy? Are you elated? Now God still comes to support you the way he is. He is our banner. And so go knowing God's names. In Psalm 9 verse 10, listen to what the Bible says. Those who know your name put their trust in you. So this is the point that actually those who know God's name, that if I ask you to try as much as possible to know God's name, know him by name and the circumstance circumstances that are around you will reveal his name to you as he helps you through it as he helps you overcome it as he helps, helps you to, to sail through put your trust in him so his power his wonder his might describes his works his acts the way he responds to us now in which situation are you my brother in which situation are you my sister so may god who revealed himself variously, variously among very many people, may he reveal himself to you. May he come to you depending on whichever help that you need. Is, do you need to be healed? Jehovah Rapha. Do you need to be fed? Jehovah Provider. The other one, Jireh. And Shalom. And Nisi. And all those. May God, 
whom we serve. His peace, his joy, his comfort. Be with you and be with me. And that we shall know him at a personal level. Know him at a personal level. Know him personally and interact with him at a personal level. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen. May God bless you.